So today we'll be talking about social media, and I'll be doing this with the help of my co-presentators, which would be Jack, Brandon, Olivia, and Vanessa. And our subject today is social media. So people kind of know what social media is, but they have a problem defining it. So if you look at the generic definition, it's from the Merriam-Webster. We see that social media is a form of electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content. And it's a bit of a big concept to understand what that really entails. So the best way to maybe understand it is to see at the components of what makes social media social media. So we know that certain parts of it are really special. So we know that social media is highly accessible, which means it works over multiple platforms. If you have Facebook on your computer, chances are you have Facebook on your phone. If you're buying a brand new TV, the new Samsung smart ones, you've got Facebook for your TV. It's scalable. They're interactive, which means it's two-way communication. You receive information, but most of the time you're giving it back, and it's based on a Web 2.0 concept. So we're talking about information sharing, collaboration, and user-centric design. So the user-centric design, really what it means is it's customizable. My Facebook page doesn't necessarily look like Jack's Facebook page, and you can kind of play around with the options to make the media relevant to the way you like it. And the last thing, it's probably the most brilliant, it's about sharing. So if you just want to look at traditional media versus, let's say, maybe social media, take the example of the Gazette. If there's an article that you liked in the Gazette, let's say 20 years ago, how would you share and give your opinion about it? You'd have to go write a letter to the editor, mail it, hope he receives it, hopes he chooses it. If you want to send an article somewhere, you would have to maybe buy an extra copy if you don't want to give away yours, clip it, mail it to a friend, hope they receive it. Now take a look at what happens with new social media. So, a lot of news websites like Dig. If you like, if you like the article, all you have to do is click like. If you want to comment, all you do is click comment, and there are hundreds and hundreds of comments. If you want to share the article, all you have to do is click on the button share, and it asks you, how do you want to share? Do you want to do this by email? Do you want to send it over Twitter? Do you want to do it over your Facebook? And it really gives you all of these choices, and it becomes so much more instantaneous, and the amount of information that you can take in grows exponentially. I'm going to pass on the presentation to my co-presenter, Brandon, right now, who's going to talk about how big is social media. So we know how big social media is. We know it's pretty big. Like, how many of you have Facebook, Twitter accounts, YouTube? Probably everyone has one, right? So how do we know social media is so big? Why do we have an image that it's so big, but many of you are not sure how really big it is. You might think, oh, I have 500 friends on Facebook, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily big. So social media is actually the number one activity on the internet. So it took the radio 38 years to get around 50 million users. It took TV around 14 years to do the same thing. It took the internet about four years. It took the iPod around three years to get 50 million users. It took Facebook around nine months to get 100 million users. So that's telling you how big social media is getting into it. Not just Facebook, but for a BBM or an iPhone app, it took around nine months to get one billion users. So I'm, that's how big social media is getting into it and the scale of it is. So if we were to take Facebook, for example, and we wanted to see how big it was. So if Facebook, all the users were considered part of a country or population, it would be the fourth biggest country in the world. First would be China, India, United States, and then it would be Facebook country. So that's how big Facebook is. So now if I were to look at Twitter and how big it is, so let me, for an example, Twitter is where people have post up tweets about random stuff or, and people have followers and that's how it works. It's sort of like you're friends with someone but you just follow them and you can see subscribers and all that. So Ashton Kutcher and Ellen DeGeneres have more followers than the population of Norway, Ireland and Panama put together. So that's actually more, they have more followers than three countries together. So if I were to go next with YouTube, YouTube is the second largest search engine. Yes, we know it, you search videos, but even then it's probably the second largest search engine. So people are searching videos daily on YouTube and we all know if we get bored, we go through videos like left, right and center, recommend it here, post them there and view them here. So if I were to stack to the next level, blogs, there's over 200 billion blogs out there. So people get to post random videos, opinions, recommendations, spread of word, all that gets around through blogs. And that's very important because companies seem to use that as a form of getting voices and recommendations for their products. So 
Now the key point of social media is that we no longer have to search for news, it finds us. So if you log on to Facebook or Twitter, you'll see like a tweet or a post about something about the news. So there's nothing to worry about, like we don't have to go on news and search for what's happening. We might log on to Facebook and hear about something that's happening in our city at the moment. So that's why social media is so big. It's accessible anywhere and there's a wide variety of information. So uh, next slide. So. The next slide is about how companies get out to users and how users get out to companies. It's like a large, a small act will become so large in, throughout social media. So from a small poke to a like to a dislike to a tweet, all this is simple with all the technology you have, we have right now, iPhones, Blackberries, and apps, and smartphones. So all this is very easy to get out through social media. So it's... People used to say back then, it's the economy is stupid, but now they're saying it's a people-driven economy which is stupid. So anyone could post anything out there and it could become a trend, companies need to pick up on that. And it's truly evident that social media isn't fading away anytime soon. So now I'm going to pass it on to Olivia and she's going to talk about the power of social media. Okay. We've heard about what social media is, we've heard about how big social media is, but what power does social media have? Social media has the power to get people to act. Let's take the Free Sakina campaign, for instance. This was an Iranian woman who was accused of committing adultery, so she was supposed to be stoned to death because of that. It got on Facebook, it got on other web pages, and within days, there were over a million signatures causing this to stop. Another thing, um, the Obama campaign. It caused a movement. People were sending information. Um, people were sending information, text messages, Facebook messages um, about the campaign. If you didn't want to follow the campaign trail, you could get all the information you wanted online. Another power social media has is to get people um, to people's voices to be heard. Um, let's take the gap. Let's take Gap for instance, uh, the Gap logo for instance. Um, this was a new campaign Gap had. This was a campaign Gap had, um, the, comp the Gap logo campaign, and uh, they did a, they created a logo which consumers didn't like. Uh, consumers were able to voice their opinions online. This made uh, the company change their logo. I'm done. Yeah, sorry. Next slide. These are mine. Oh next, next. 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 Don't think I just read it. Okay, so my part is after Mrs. Olivia. Why has social media gone on? Focusing afterwards on the impact it has and the power of it. So, social media is caught on for numerous reasons. They're all pretty much celebrated right on the wall. But I'm not about to name them all to all of you guys. You can just see them right there. But in one short word, it's pretty much just collaboration. Society's way of, of, share, of, of growing is basically sharing, sharing knowledge. Sorry. Society's way of sharing knowledge is society's way of growing. However it's said. Right. Um, okay. And yeah, you know, it's also very detaining. <laughs> It's also very entertaining in, 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 in the process, which is why you can watch yourself, you know, chatting on Facebook or watching videos on YouTube all day long, and not even flinch. But if you if you have the mere concept of reading a book on your couch or anywhere or doing any kind of study, you want to pretty much do anything else but that. And maybe I'm too quick to judge, but you know, if I, if, if I were to ask anyone here, I'm pretty sure everyone would rather be watching a movie on a website like make a video, YouTube, or on their blog than studying for an exam. So, anyway, and, and also just look at the demographics. It's staggering to which point you can see in the past five years, just the, just the entire world, the entire U.S. demographics have switched from mere percentages of using social media to staggering really high numbers. Consider, just, consider the ages of 65 and over, who, to my general belief, were always people who said, computers, I don't know how to work them, social media, what the hell is that? But now, we're looking at over 26% of people over 65 years old are using social media and accessing social media on a regular basis. 
And social media, like Brad had already put together, is it has many platforms. It can be publishing sites, it can be sharing sites, virtual worlds, live cast, blogs, uh, gaming social networks, or just basically social networks by themselves. But next, now let's just let's just focus on some of the biggest ones that we know, the ones who've become the biggest success on the internet: Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, blogging, or you know, LinkedIn. And I've been able to find and track numerous facts about these. And just to name a few, consider the fact that consider the fact that Facebook has twenty has more than twenty five billion pieces of content uploaded to it every single month, or people spend more than 500 billion minutes on Facebook per month. Twitter gets more than 300,000 unique video, uh, viewers a day. LinkedIn has over 80% has over 80 of companies using it as a recruitment tool and, all, and has most executives of all featured 500 companies on it as members. Blogging has 77% of internet users utilizing it, or YouTube, which has Every single minute of the day acquires more than 24 hours worth of video. So with all this information, that we know it's caught on. We, we've been able to see and track the results. But how is it going to help a business that's getting into the market? And it's very simple. By utilizing the potential of, of social media. So uh, social media gives, gives access to creating more than just a buzzword of a product. It's the opportunity, it's the opportunity to basically bring out your brand, and measure the results. It can be also extremely beneficial to companies of all sizes. Many times, people get so caught up in spending time talking about strategizing, about what they can do in different kind of circumstances and situations, and with different, different mediums, that social media can be excluded. But social media is a tool, and if the tool is rightfully used, the tool can be a great advantage to any kind of company. So if you have a good product, a detailed business plan, and customer service policies are in place, and you're willing to spend a little bit of extra money and a little bit of extra time, here's a few things that social media can do for you in the long run. It can give you a great opportunity to begin listening to what your clients or what your target audience is actually saying. It can allow you to have one-on-one -on -one communication and rapport with, your cons with the consumers. It can personalize your brand, and it can provide humongous potential and opportunities of word-of-mouth buzz about anything you're taking off the market. You're building up your product, you're building up your company, you're building up your name. That's why. Well, then, while I know that this isn't the end of all the benefits, it's a good place to begin thinking about the benefits that social media can provide and how to use it to advertise or how to use it, how to use its potentially low cost to bring out your to, 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 as a business, as a business opportunity for your as an opportunity for your business to take advantage of. Let's consider the article here found by Michael a few weeks back. It discusses about a company who's taking product, putting products to the market for single mothers. They found 53 women on Twitter who had more than 1,800 followers and paid them each $50 to tweet about a product that this company was throwing to the market. And they wanted to get general responses. Now, for those 53 women, uh, $50 a piece is $2,600 $2, roughly dollars they spent on the advertising cost of the social media medium. If you make the math, they, they were basically they were able to reach in a matter of a month over 7.9 million people around the US as a target audience, around the world, sorry. That's 7.9 million people for $2,600. And it was a target market, it was a target audience. These single mothers had single mothers, had other mothers, had people who were, it was, it was parents that were all tweeting one another and creating a relationship. Now, with that said, I'm beginning back to Michael, who's going to continue. So another concept that enterprises might think is, well, why should I really use social media to advertise as opposed to traditional advertising? And what it was written is, it's a concept that's a bit hard to define, but it's very easy to understand. It's called the art, the air of authenticity. So what that means is that your user's perception through social media is dramatically different than through regular advertising. So let me give you an example of this. If I were to send you a mailer say, saying, go to my website, check out my commercial for such and such product that I sell, how many people would actually go? You get stuff in the mail and you would actually go on the website and check it out and maybe buy my product? Probably very few of you. Now, if I take that same commercial, the exact same commercial, and I go and I post on my Facebook wall and I post on other people's Facebook walls and maybe I pay people for have Twitter messages about it, 
What are the chances that if your friend posts a video on your wall and says, this is a great video, check it out, great commercial, lots of fun, that you would check it out? Probably dramatically higher. And the reason is, it's your perception of what that commercial is. With traditional advertising, the user's perception is that this is advertising. But when you put it in a social media context, you really lower everyone's guard. It doesn't become about selling, it becomes about sharing. And once again, when you lower your user's guard, it obviously becomes a lot easier to sell to them. Another point that's very important with businesses, and it's especially important if you're already using online models. So when you search something on Google, have you ever wondered why something shows up first and why something shows up last? It's called your search rank. Now what happens is your search rank is so important. The difference between being in the first 10 results and being in the last 100 is huge. It's so big that it spawned an entire business called search engine optimization. Now Google knows that social media is so big that it's amended the way it searches. So normally in its normal algorithm, it had a standard process and then social media came along and they said, you know what, we're gonna start changing our algorithm. So what that does is it takes into account your social media world's network. So let's say you were to want, you want to buy shoes and you were to go to Google and you type in shoes. Normally, it would have just given you a straight answer for shoes, probably Zappo, whatever big companies come out and sell shoes. But let's say you did that in maybe two years from now when this is really on the map. What's going to happen is if you type shoes and someone in your group of friends on Facebook or on Twitter recently bought shoes and said he had a great deal, you know what? If you look at the top of your Google page, you are going to see that Twitter message. Maybe there's a coupon for it. But Google knows that you take into account what your friends say about certain products much higher than what they find. Now I'll pass it back on to Brian a bit, who's going to talk about some other aspects of social media. So now I've talked about social media and how big it was and how the power of social media. I'm going to talk about the use of social media to actually hire employees. So like, I have two quotes of actual potential employers. And one of them said, social media is not only a great networking tool, it's also a way for employers to perform reference checks on job candidates. So when a second employer also said, social media tools offer hiring ma managers the ability to gain a broad picture of an individual. So that broad picture that they want, 80% of companies use LinkedIn as a primary tool to find employees. So on the next slide, these are some facts that I, I got for... What would you actually post on Twitter or Facebook or on LinkedIn to actually look like a good potential employee? So first you'd start off with, uh, you'd probably pick a very good social media site and you'd participate in its basic, basic, uh, basic functions. So uh, you would focus on in a somewhat 100% business oriented one such as LinkedIn or go for something like Facebook or Twitter. Then you would share links, news stories, like interesting business stories and facts that would catch people's attention and stir something up among your friends. So then you would also ask people in your network. So if you were part of the My, My McGill network or the McGill network on Facebook, you probably meet all the people in your classes, stir things up, join a group or get discussions going. So you'd actually meet more new people. And then make sure you have to keep your your, your profile somewhat more updated. So you want, you want to have something that says more than just your, well, I attended this school in 1999 or something. You'd have something that says, I attended McGill in 2010 so, or something like that. To keep it updated so people know you're actually checking in, keeping up, and not it's not a deserted profile. So also you would also tweet on interesting stories. So you'd post up a random link about something funny, something business oriented. So people actually comment and your friends and your network and all that. So, however, the most simplest thing is you always want to keep in touch with the people that you have on Facebook. You don't want to just have people on your Facebook as a friend but not actually talk to them or something like that because it's really evident when you have 600 friends and the last post you had was three months ago. So you want to keep it up to date and you want to keep in contact with everyone. So on the next slide, I'm going to talk about social media as a form of due diligence. So what does that really mean? So if a company is actually willing to invest in another company, they would do like a run-up check or search, up, search about their background, about previous concepts or investigations in business. That's a form of 
what employees are using social media as. So they will look you up, your Facebook, look at the pictures that you have, what you do on Friday nights, or something like that to sort of search it up. If you post up interesting links, if you have friends in the network and all that stuff. So on the next slide, I'm gonna talk about what companies not only are using to hire, but what they know about their customers. So well, how can they use social media to get to know their customers? That's actually pretty simple. Like right now, I want to log into the Second Cup Wi-Fi, and they made they made they asked me a few simple questions. So, what's my name, my age, and uh, the location, or something like that. So, with all those three simple informations, they were they were they were able to know me as a customer. So, they knew my name, my age, what network I'm from, and all that. And and this was all linked to my Facebook, so they could derive what I like, what type of music I listen to, what times I tweet in or check in to a second cup. So if I were to check it every Fridays at 3.30, they would probably have to change their hours of operation because they probably some, some of their business branches close by in the area that I'm in, I'm not open at that time. So what else do companies want to know about their customers? So on the next slide, co companies want to know about what, they want to know what, what their customers are voicing. Is it easy to collect? It's minimal cost, but the reliability might somewhat be off because people might use a lot of LOLs, ha 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 on the internet, you can't take people some seriously with their blogs, but they can detect trends, wants, dislikes among the population in large. So if, if I posted or I dislike vanilla tasted coffee, Second Cup would take that into consideration, maybe might discount on the price, if I'm saying overpriced coffee. So it also allows to spread the word. So for the next, next slide, I have an example of how Doritos sort of use Facebook as a way to detect flavors. They created a sort of ad, which was easy to get people to comment on. It was simple, it was reliable, it was cheap, and it created a buzz because tons of people posted on videos, they made commercials for it, and now they're stuck with two flavors, and there's a $25,000 prize and a 1% of future sales. It gets people going, and that's how Doritos Canada sort of, sort of using social media as another form. So now I'm going to... Let's pass it on to uh, my partner, and she's going to talk about uh, Foursquare. Hi. So, like Jacques uh, mentioned earlier, there's um, there's many like main network that people connect to, so like Facebook and Twitter and so many so many, so many more. Like me, I knew them. And uh, now I'm going to talk to talk about one um, social media network that I didn't know about and I discovered, the Foursquare. It's a really interesting site because it offers uh, a part for the customer, like us, normal people, and it gives you the, the business uh, side a good opportunity too. Uh, as a tool for normal people like us, if I want to go to uh, a restaurant close to my place, by example, I just go on my iPhone, my BlackBerry, on my Android device, and I just, with my GPS on Foursquare, they give me all the restaurant, all the entertainment place that I can go to, um, that are close to my area. So, in this case, if I choose one of the restaurants, I can just click on it and I see all the comments. And if you have friends on your Foursquare, then they give you the comments on, uh, of your friends that made about this restaurant or this museum, or this, all the entertainment plays that can offer you on this website. Uh, it's really interesting for the people like us, me, if I go to this restaurant, or I want it, I'm interesting to go to this restaurant, um, I either like have the, the choice to just go for it without knowing, or I can go on this website and know more about it. And even you can know if one of your friends went, what is his is, is, um, comment and opinion about this restaurant, if he liked it, and what about the food. So you just check in when you're there, and uh, you give your comments about the place. Um, it's good for, for... It's good for businesses, too, because they can post um, publicity, and they can post, like, if you're known as being like a lot in this, I don't know, uh, as this coffee, by example. They maybe send you um, um, 
a publicity meaning that you have 15% off at this, in that this place because you're going a lot and they want like you to influence the people around you to going too. So for business, it's a really good marketing tool. Um, so I think that's it for Foursquare and I'm going to pass it to my colleague, um, Olivia. Is it me again? Yeah. Hi, um, so I'll be talking very briefly on how uh, to measure social media's exposure. I'm just going to highlight on three, uh, on four points. The first one was uh, Twitter, to see how uh, Twitter uh, is affecting, uh, is effective in your business campaign. You have to measure its exposure by looking at the number of followers you have, um, those who send tweets to your message and then those who retweeted your message. Uh, for Facebook, you could try the number of fans um, who commented on your brand's page. Uh, you could also track it by um, those, who those who liked your brand and those who clicked on the, your links. For YouTube, to measure its effectiveness, uh, measure the number of views uh, of people who viewed your, uh, your video online. And then for blogging, you could measure the number of visitors who viewed your post um, that was tied to your promotion. Um, next will be Mike. We'll finish it off. So how do people react to your messages? So when we're talking about measuring, we all know that Twitter quantifies the number of times your links were clicked. You know, we talk about Facebook, you want to determine the times of messages that came in and out. It really gives you a good brand monitoring feedback. Same thing with YouTube and blogs in general. Pass it out to Brian Aventura. So how do we, how do we, like we know how big it is and we know we measure it, but measuring the influence. So how, how are people affected by social media? So would you trust if a marketer came up to you and said that this product is amazing, I want you to try it. But like, no, like it, you would kind of be risky. You'd kind of be like, okay, is this like a media stunt or is it just, they just want to sell those products. But if your friend said, oh my God, this product is good and he shared it on your Facebook wall and he linked it, he gave you the website and he said it was awesome, you'd probably give it a thought. And that's what I'm talking about. Looking, looking at whether the engagement materials listed above are positive, neutral statement. So this positive, this chart tells you how it sort of affects how, how, how social media is used as a form of measure influence, how it's successful. So now I'm gonna pass it down to Mike again, and he's gonna talk about uh, the negative aspects of social media. Negative aspects of social media is actually Vanessa with the pros and cons. <clears throat> So I'm going to talk to you about the negative aspects of um, and the positive aspects aspect of uh, social media actually. So here we have the negative aspects, the, the cons about social media. The main one, there's no privacy. So if you uh, like post something like Bradman said earlier about Facebook and LinkedIn, and everything is so open to everyone to see, that the problem is that where's your privacy now? Like everyone can see everything about your profile, and if I, I don't know, I write that I, I went partying on Friday and Friday, and I had really a lot of fun, then maybe my boss is on my Facebook, or maybe my boss is on my Twitter, or whatever, and they're going to know about it, and maybe they're going to like judge me for being as irresponsible. And what about the LinkedIn part? If... I go on LinkedIn and I post my CV and I, my only job ever was to work for coffees and, and everything like that. Then is it my teammate in school are going to judge me for it? Because I don't have any experience in management. I only worked in the coffee shop. So this whole privacy is, um, the privacy issue is a big problem. Um, the only, the, 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 the the other big one about uh, social media is the, um, the like how many network, how many social media, media network you need. Uh, at one point we talked about Foursquare and we talked about a lot of like um, social media network and uh, how many do you need at the end? Why can be like just one connected? There's a problem about 
about uh, going to all this this different network and the time that you lose going to all these networks. So. The pros are really simple, actually. It's giving you, it's giving you a lot of uh, opportunity to connect with people. So in case of emergency or any case of like drama that happens around the world, then we can just we can just post it and Twitter it. So there's a, a mark, and people are more aware and can connect faster. So that's it for the the pros, I guess. So, we'd like to thank everyone for listening. Uh, thanks thank for enjoying you. through all of it. It'll probably yeah, need to be edited it'll be a bit more. Yeah. See you at the final presentation. Okay, bye. <laughs>